Well, it's the end of the day. I got the, the, the dam wall up to where I want it. It's quite large. And the swale dug, the backfill swale. And I got the mound raked out. So it's a pretty good shape and you can see the topsoil on the back. I'll put that back on tomorrow. I got culverts on order that'll go there so my road can go across. I just thought while well, I have the laser level set up because I got rain coming tomorrow and I definitely did not want to leave the pond without a spillway because the pond would tend to go downstream if I did. So I installed the spillway tonight just in case we get a a big womp or rainstorm or something. Um, the beeping is the laser level. Now, that's about where the water line is. It's a bit high here. This is where I'm going to put the culverts. But this is kind of, this is where the swale is really kind of to the level I want. And you can see on the mound here, where the water line is. So we're kind of following. It's not super deep. But this is, uh, this swale has got to be kind of safe because uh, it's going to be actually be the spillway for this pond. And I definitely don't want to push it and try to put too much water in and have a failure somewhere because that would be bad. So, as you can see, this this pond will fill and fill this swale, and the swale will fill the pond also, but it'll fill all the way to this point, and here's our dead level spillway. I just kind of went in with the bulldozer and back dragged, you know, pulled the material back, so you can see um, We're pretty close here within an inch or so of the whole way but I'll come in tune this up and rake it out tomorrow so it's perfect uh, I just wanted to make sure and you know just a little tip for anyone else trying this do not leave your spillway or you do not leave your dam overnight without a spillway even if there's no rain in the forecast it's just not worth it because all the work you did would be gone and not only that, it could be potentially very dangerous or just a huge mess and kind of an environmental catastrophe if you go and clog a stream with mud. You know, you kill a stream or dam it up or just clog it up. And that's also a, you know, a vector for the EPA or the DNR to see you and come and find you, which would be less than ideal. So you kind of get a feel for what the backfill swale with pond looks like. This is the first one I've ever done, but I think I got the le I know I have the levels all right. The water levels are all right. It's just a matter of coming through and putting the topsoil back on. And then right here, right here where uh, my road is going to come through here, kind of right through here, kind of where those buckets are and up through next to the backhoe. There's going to be culverts here that I have to bury. So that's the next step. Well, enjoy. Here's the finished deal. Track rolled and back, back dragged. Ready for topsoil. There's the pile of topsoil. You can see with the flags there. I laid out the uh, water line. You want to lay out your water line before you put your topsoil on just so you can get an idea of where the topsoil needs to be and you're not putting it either in the water or way too far away from the water. And you really got to put your topsoil back or you just won't get anything to grow on it. The uh, swale's all raked out and I got the topsoil put back on it. As you can see over there is our big spillway for the pond and the swale. It kind of wraps all the way around and ends need a path for equipment and walking and all that good stuff. So you see back flood swale with a pond.
of the dam wall, I should say. And you can see, you can see by where the flags are, we got plenty of freeboard. Um, right here where I just have bare clay, I am going to be putting culverts for a road to go across it. So that'll be, when I can get the culverts delivered here, I will be doing that. I'll make a video of that also. Um, so next step is to just put the topsoil on, front and back and top, and all around the uh, shoreline, and wait for rain. Enjoy. Here we have the finished product, minus the water, of course. But I got topsoil on the back of the the dam wall and topsoil all the way down to the uh, water line all the way around. I'll probably put some clover on here or something. Anything, just to get anything growing on it to hold the dirt down. I'll do the bigger plantings next year. It's getting a little late in the year to get a lot to germinate. It's going to be winter soon. So this is what it looks like when it's done. We got a little good little path on the top. Not really an equipment path, but a walking path. And that's what it, that's what it looks like when you're all done. And the chickens just love it when you dig up the ground. They just follow you around in the machine all day eating bugs and worms and grubs and seeds and all the goodies that are in the topsoil and underneath. Well, hopefully it'll rain. It's supposed to rain tonight and tomorrow. Big rain. Hopefully we'll get some water in here. I got ducks in the brooder that are about ready to come out. I got one pond already, and if this one will just hold, just hold enough, just a little bit of water even, I think I can get the ducks to seal it the rest of the way, and uh, we'll see how it goes. Enjoy. We're working on the back flood swale again, installing the piping under the roadway. These are 10 inch culverts, 20 feet long. I got them pretty level. Uh, what I'm doing is just putting dirt in the, on the sides and in the center to kind of hold them in place so they're solid when I'm burying them. And what I'll do is just take the, I'll take the backhoe and I'll scoop some of this material and just put it on top and then kind of knock it down into the center and tamp it in. I got my big blue heavy tamper. And once I have them all, once I'm happy that the clay is, is really tamped in well, you know, kind of all the way in tight around the culvert, then I'll take the bulldozer and bring the road surface up over it and completely bury it. Uh, I'm just trying to get ready for gravel. So this is the first step in installing the culvert, and there's more to come. Here's the culverts tamped in place. As you can see, there's going to be two or three feet sticking out on each side. And uh, where I have it packed in between is for the road bed. And those two kind of black like pillars kind of holding up the road bed so the pressure isn't on the culvert itself. Well, I think the culverts can handle quite a bit of weight. I like the feeling of having them, you know, hand tamped in the middle with my my uh, heavy tamper and uh, oh by the way I put these culverts they're slightly below the water level the spillway the level of the spillway and and the reason for that is I want to take a take advantage of the full volume capacity of the pipes so if they're slightly below the water level they could potentially be all the way underwater instead of being higher where the water level would actually only flow through a, p a percentage of the pipe, if you get what I mean. So I put them all the way under the water by about an inch under the, the level of the spillway just to take advantage of the full diameter of these 10 inch pipes. And uh, that's how that's gonna work. They should handle, they should be able to handle the flow here. This is just rainwater runoff. 
and I've seen my lower swales handle a lot more water than it's going to fall on here and I only have two culverts there uh, but of course they're not attached to a dam so I'm I'm erring on the side of caution here just to make sure the dam stays safe so I'm going to push this dirt over the uh, the culverts and start to roll it in and uh, make the roadbed next.